Hello. Thank you very much. Um, we got this invitation this weekend, so it caught us a little bit by surprise. But uh, thank you very much anyway. Uh, BCOR actually stands for Be Courageous. So we had to grab this uh, opportunity to be on stage. Of course. <laughs> we will talk about uh, BCOR as a company today and also how we have uh, used Neptune in our road to building our platform. Uh, HP here has been stuck in this uh, meeting room uh, for the last two years uh, and obviously not have a roof of this big globe but just a small uh, boring one. So the first question he asked is, can I bring my big globe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So HP, please. Yeah, so this is uh, Mother Earth and um, she is struggling. And um, it does not really look like that, but uh, we have some serious problems uh, when it comes to, um, to taking care of Mother Earth. And, um, well, Bicor is really an energy tech company. I am not a uh, tech person at all. I am HP, and I, when uh, people were starting to uh, program and develop, I was uh, focusing on taking care of uh, the trout species and the woodpeckers and those kind of things. So I'm very much into the sustainability part of, um, of the world. And uh, what we do uh, is to actually enable large corporates around the world to document the renewable energy origin of the electricity they use. So we are, plainly said, a company doing documentation. But that's not that simple, so we'll get a little bit back to how difficult that might be. Um, we have one fundamental principle, and that is transparency. Because we want to enable our corporate clients to be able to choose transparently the solutions that fit their sustainability strategy. And we build on three pillars. One is that renewable energy is a branded ingredient. And actually, especially in your industry, what would uh, the story be for your industry if you were to tell that your, your cloud was running on coal-fired power plants and a CO2 emission of 900 grams per kilowatt hour? That wouldn't be a very nice story to tell. So that ingredient is vital to uh, most products and most services around the world. Secondly, team is everything. And we have teamed up in a way that enables us to utilize both uh, energy business knowledge, uh, um, uh, R&D experience, and not the least, development experience. We are not young uh, entrepreneurs, so we have 25, 30 years experience from uh, different business uh, angles. And finally, and this is something I've learned over these late years since we started in 2018, is that digitalization, that is everything in what we do. And why is this really important? Well, when you use electricity here today, there's no emissions, there's no smell, there's no, uh, no fumes at all. But how that electricity has been produced, that really matters. And to just put some numbers to it, 75% of the carbon footprint of global business comes from the energy they use. So if we could clean up that and make sure that all corporates around the world were just using renewable energy, problem solved. And um, we actually have a very, very limited number of years to fix this. In 2030, the green shift has to be done. Eight years. So when we were to start to develop stuff, we couldn't use slow, dull tools. We needed things that could develop fast. So we don't have time to play around. We need really the fastest tools available. And as you know, this is the picture of, uh, of uh, the development in the global temperature for the, since, 19, oh, so since uh, 1850 approximately. And it goes from uh, blue, and which is normal, to red, which is uh, dead hot. And when we started to uh, develop, we, we were not really looking to Henry Ford, but we were uh, more or less uh, 
inspired a little bit by him because uh, he said, um, if I asked my clients, they would ask for a faster horse. But we did it one step further because we just uh, also asked uh, the clients. So we had an idea, we were able to develop a mock-up and we could go on, uh, on route to clients and ask what they thought. And then we could return back and say that, no, 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 this was not what they wanted. We have to try again. So this interaction with the tools that we have today is very meaningful because it's fast, it's fun, and it's very impactful. And this is what we talk about when we say green by black numbers. Our clients, they are not philanthropic, so they're not green. But they're not necessarily just black neither. So they're not just about the, the, the maximization of, of revenue short term. It's the and, it's the both. Because they are realizing that their consumers, their customers, they are concerned about uh, how things are happening in the world, how climate is changing. So green by black numbers, that is a way to change the world in a green direction faster and with more precision. And it enables us to help our clients to do more good, not just less bad. So green by black numbers, guys. And who are interested in this? Well, quite a few. This is an organization called RE100, which uh, enables large corporates to uh, commit to only use renewable energy. And this is a very old slide, uh, because they started off as RE100. Now I think they have more than 600 corporates on board. And it's an amazing growth of companies that are coming to us in the IT sector, in data center, and those kind of uh, companies. So they have understood it, and they're really moving towards renewable energy, because that is an important ingredient in their service offering. And I think I've said this already, but uh, when your house is on fire, you don't start a colloquium. You take the fastest and most efficient tools that you have, and you create solutions immediately. So from idea, this is one of my experiences, not from an IT guy, but my experience together with Rune. We came back uh, with an idea. Rune made a mock-up, and I was on the road presenting that to clients in three days. And now we are on a road to develop it, and we, we will start to onboard after summer. And some of our clients, when we started out in 2018, one of our clients said, um, uh, we don't understand what you're doing. So we made a, another mock-up. And we decided to call it Marbly. So Marbly is a digital ecosystem for companies that want to document the origin of their energy consumption. But as soon as we showed them this, they called it the Tinder for renewable energy. Because this was so different from buying electricity suddenly our clients could choose the name of the power plant. Some wants wind, some wants hydro, some wants new, some wants old. They could choose. Suddenly the whole experience of buying energy got another dimension of transparency and impactfulness. And you can imagine, this is, a, this is actually a power plant. This is uh, the world's most beautiful hydropower plant, uh, nominated by The Guardian a few years back. And you can imagine this difference a corporate brand can tell if they can explain that their product is produced on electricity. That is a logical, boring product. Might be expensive, but at least it's not very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go to the emotional story and talking about your product being produced on the world's most beautiful hydropower. Those are two different stories when it comes to branding and brand value. But Rune, how did we go, go from the Tinder for renewable energy, where we are now, and how did all this start? Well, actually, when you came to me, uh, like four years ago, or more than that, actually, um, and I tried to sketch what you were talking about. And this is actually the, our napkin drawing from my kitchen table, 
when uh, um, HP described uh, his ideas uh, about uh, what he was about to want to do in the uh, renewable sector. He wanted to digitalize it because uh, the current situation was more like uh, old 80s uh, phone call dealing. They were calling to each other, selling uh, the green certificates and so on. We wanted a different story with both digitalization of the processes around that, but we also wanted to connect the consumers with the producers. There, of the, and there you see also the Tinder uh, acronym. Uh, we started the process, um, and at that time, uh, I have had a long experience with developing in SAP. Um, of course, uh, no uh, Ulan Dre and Njol back from the 90s. They came to me as well for, as Andreas in 2011, introduced this Neptune uh, application development tool. Uh, I fancied it very much, so I ended up uh, working with SAP development and also Neptune for uh, many years. So when I uh, got contacted here, Ulandre described that he was about to launch a new open edition of the Planet uh, 8, the Planet 9. And the selection for me was basically very easy. Uh, I knew what they were up to, and uh, I got uh, Ulla Andres' promise that this tool, this will be work for you as well. So basically the journey we have had with uh, Neptune, uh, I would divide in three phases. The first phase, when the tool was uh, in its first uh, version, we soon found out that with our requirements, digitalization of this and making this our main backend system, uh, the database capabilities was not uh, what we uh, expected. But Ulandre, he was there right on time and said, we will do something about it. Uh, and he started working on uh, integrating the type ORM. Um, we, on the other hand, we made a two-level system at that time, having part of the database to prove our data models and so on uh, in a Java environment with Oracle database. But as soon as the uh, type form and the database capabilities was um, in place, we moved everything into Planet 9. And that was our second phase. We really got the speed of development. We got the tools we knew we could really be efficient in the further processing. And then the phase three would be when they uh, introduced the Neptune DXP cloud. Since we have had help from uh, Ian uh, supporting our system uh, uh, from day one, uh, we soon become a pilot customer there as well. So we moved the whole environment with the development into uh, DXP Cloud. And we focused on that part. So basically, the, our systems uh, uh, landscape is pretty simple. We have Neptune. <laughs> <laughs> And we have to have an accounting system, though. So, but <laughs> so it's it's a very simple. So if anything anything goes wrong, we know where to look. Yeah. <laughs> and when we need new uh, functionality, new mockups, whatever, where do you go? We go to Neptune. So um, I put up the both the energy side here and uh, for the producers and consumers because. We consider both those as uh, customers. Since we're acting more like a Tinder, we're matching them, matchmaker, um, we uh, soon looked into the producers that we have in our platform. So we started to explore a little bit on what they needed of tools uh, to uh, cope with the transparency that uh, HP wanted. He wanted open book, basically, for the producers, so they should see everything. Well, that was pretty easy. 
because it turned out they needed much the same information as we need for our daily business. So what we actually uh, made was a launch pad for them in the system, but we added uh, the authorization system, actually making the possibility to show them the data according to the user. So that part was easy, but uh, HP, how, how is it to get your uh, customers this close to you, both with the, with, with the systems and also with the processes? Well, these are the producers, the producers of renewable energy around the world. And we are helping producers from um, China to uh, Chile. Uh, and uh, most producers, they're focusing on keeping the windmill running, keeping the hydro turbine, uh, turbine running, or cleaning the solar panels. They're not so much focused on the, on the market side or selling these green attributes, which is kind of uh, far away from their core operations. So they can be put in the trunk of the car and left there and don't really know what is going on. They are uh, left in the dark. And that is actually what is going on or has been going on in this market for these green attributes. It's a black box trading model, uh, very much like Rune said. It's like a pit trading operation from the 1980s. But to be able to provide total transparency for them and to invite them in to give their views on what they need, that was amazing. And it creates a loyalty amongst our producers that we have never, ever experienced before. But that's actually the one side of it. And even more important is maybe the, the client side. And just before I leave it to you, Rune, I would just want to tell you that in three years, we have been able to grow a portfolio of 15 billion electrons globally. So we are matching 15 terawatts, if you, if you may, peer-to-peer uh, -peer between consumers in Taiwan to Montreal. Uh, we actually hardly have customers in Norway. So our business is more or less only international. But how did, this, how did we go about with the client side? Yeah, the client side was uh, the fun part because uh, we tried to preach uh, more or less our uh, very... Uh, enthusiastic and um, detailed, uh, nerdy uh, look at uh, consumption and even on hourly basis uh, showing all kinds of things. We built the different uh, mock-ups, um, basically using inbuilt high chart uh, um, capabilities in the launch pad. With that, we were uh, able to create uh, the views and our ideas in a matter of a couple of three, four days. And we sent out uh, HP to show the customers. Mm. Um, they were not at that level, not at all. But we got uh, feedback so we could adjust uh, mock-ups and we made another tour. And at the end, we uh, had adjusted enough and then we introduced Marbly. Marbly is the consumer side where they can follow their consumption in different countries, on different sites, uh, how much is covered with, the, with the renewable energy, and so on. There is scope to the, the CO2 uh, calculations and everything. Uh, this is uh, created in React, and the whole thing is running inside the um, inside the Neptune, DXP. Um, and we, we mentioned it a little bit earlier, and that was uh, the, the hourly matching. That was uh, kind of the top uh, <laughs> on our head when we started, but it, it showed uh, that um, uh, it's not until today that they actually start with uh, looking into hourly matching in a wider sense. It, in certain um, areas, they like uh, and they get a standardization of going that direction. And there's not very many uh, doing this uh, around the world today. Um, there's a few initiatives. Uh, blockchain, obviously, is a good uh, thing, but we, they have not been in production yet. So 
when we uh, like to be a little bit cocky, since we have this uh, solution, we usually say that Microsoft do it, Google do it, and Bicore do it on Nept Neptune DXP Cloud. <laughs> and, and just to fill in there. <laughs> And the, just to fill in there, this is actually one of the solutions that we were drawing up. And uh, at one point, we decided to put on a sidetrack. And then, um, actually, only two months later, uh, uh, IKEA internationally came about and asked us to put that on track again. So we were doing 24-7 uh, matching of renewable energy for IKEA. Uh, it's probably the first full-scale model for 24-7 uh, for, for matching ever done. And we are, of course, very happy that uh, President Biden has now approved of that type of uh, development with his presidential order for the, for the federal level uh, of electricity consumption in the U.S. They are going to use only 24-7 in 2030. Okay, but finally, the future is electric, digital, and renewable. And we're in a hurry uh, to globalize the businesses uh, and Neptune DXP Cloud helps us do that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Wait for a few more moments. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have Q&A. We still Q &A, have uh, okay. a little bit of time for Q&A. <laughs> um, I find it so important that sustainability is a huge topic, not only of today, but uh, uh, for the future. And it's extremely important that companies such as yours focus on that. Um, as I said, it's very uh, interesting, your positioning and your ability to change something that was for always established, the electricity market, renewables, where does it come from, right? And, and for that, we'd like to open to the audience for some questions. There. Is this is on? Yeah. It is on. You talked about how organizations can link to re like renewable energy. Do you have an idea how you could do that for decentralized organizations like the blockchain to link that also to renewable energy? Uh, is the question about using blockchain to do the matching of production and consumption? Exactly. Uh, actually, we, on Friday, there was I a... I uh, answered the question yep. wrong. To use the people who are running the black blockchain to chain... Uh, Oh yeah, oh yeah. To have yeah. them aligned with your product to renewable energy, because as you know, like blockchain yeah. is becoming a more increasing energy consumer. How could you link all these people to renewable energy? Mm. Good question, and I think that's actually but the only way to survive in the if they're going to continue using electricity like they do. And uh, basically, what we're doing is uh, business to business uh, when it comes to this matching. Mm. But okay. um, but um, to, to help the, the miners and the, the companies that do uh, are in the blockchain industry, they can, of course, uh, use the same type of uh, matching as other corporates that we are helping. But we don't really see a business case for using blockchain as the core technology for matching. It is way too energy intensive. It is also some basic elements that are missing in the blockchain verification that cannot be sort of implemented in this industry. But we can help them use renewable energy and document the region, of course. It's a business opportunity there for yep. the miners. And well, for you and the miners. I think there is one more question. It, um, curtailment uh, takes up about 15, 20% of renewable energy. So energy is wasted because it can't be pushed to the grid because there's grid congestion and so on. Do you see your technology influencing that statistic? Are you talking about uh, grid losses between production and consumption? Either grid losses or if the sun shines a little bit too much or the wind blows a little oh, bit Oh, yeah, yeah. Apart. Okay, intermittency. Mm. Um, well, well, when you get down to a granular level of 24-7, uh, you can start to price the hours when there is a lack of renewable energy. So you can actually start to shift electricity consumption loads based on the price per hour on the renewable energy. That is not happening today, but uh, with a fully implemented 24-7 matching system, then you can start to actually shift loads according to the carbon uh, intensity of the grid hour by hour. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, we don't have time for more questions, actually, <laughs> unfortunately. But you feel free <laughs> on, the, on the recess to well, speak with Bakur and yeah. with Runa and Sans Petit. And uh, please feel free to do that. We'll be all in the same physical space. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right? Okay. Again. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you.